I'm number 268. Well, that's the number they stapled into my ear when I was born on the dairy farm. I don't have a name. But today, I'm going to share my story. I've heard that most people have been taught that we are these magical milk machines that live on rolling green hillsides, producing an endless supply of milk for people to enjoy. Well, that couldn't be farther from the truth. I want to share with you what my life is really like, and what it takes to get my milk into your glass. Okay, let me rewind to the beginning. When I was born, I had only a few hours with my mom before a man came and dragged me away from her. She let out anguished bellows from behind the metal bars that kept her from coming after me, watching in distress as they violently yanked my newborn body away. This is the first thing I experienced in life. Apparently they do this because I'm not allowed to continue drinking my mother's milk, and instead they package it up and they sell it to you. I was dumped into a tiny, isolated pen. Since I'm not allowed to drink my own mother's milk, they fed me a milk replacement formula, but they only came to feed me twice a day. For the first few months of my life, I was hungry and desperate to suckle most of the time. I didn't have room to walk, run, or play, to make friends. I was denied virtually everything that was natural. I was standing in my own waist, and I lived like this for six months until I reached puberty. As soon as I became fertile, life got much worse. Just like humans and other mammals, we only produce milk for our young, so we must become pregnant before we begin lactating. But while this may sound like a natural phenomenon, there's nothing natural about what happens in today's dairy farms. I was put into what they call a rape rack and was forcibly impregnated by a human using artificial insemination. Like so many other females in the dairy industry, I was violated and exploited for my reproductive system. I was pregnant for nine long months, and just like most mothers, when my baby finally came, I was overwhelmed with joy, love, and protectiveness. I cleaned him, nourished him with my milk, and we bonded immediately. His small body was snuggling against mine to keep warm in the night. He was perfect. But just as I was torn from my own mother not even a day after my birth, so was my son torn from me. Of all the pain I had endured, this was the worst. I cried out, desperate to have my baby back in my protective care, but it was no use. I knew what would happen to him. Since he was male, he would never produce milk and was of little value to the dairy industry, so he would be sent to a veal farm. There, my baby boy would be confined so tightly that he could barely move. He'd be fed an iron-deficient diet until he became severely anemic. His muscles would atrophy, and after three or four months, he'd be killed. The flesh of my calf would then be sold as high-priced veal. As soon as my baby was taken away, I was hooked up to a mechanical milk machine that pumped the milk from my body, the milk that I made for my calf. I was milked twice a day for an entire year until I had little left to give. By that point, my udder was swollen and infected with something called mastitis. Lots of the cows around me had it, and it was incredibly painful. After that year, the traumatic cycle began all over again. I was again forcibly impregnated, and again suffered the heartbreak of losing another child, and again had to endure months of mechanical milking. This cycle continued every single year of my life until now. I'm just seven years old, still an adolescent considering I can live to be 25 or 30 years. But I'm tired. I'm weak. My milk production levels are falling, and according to the men, I'm all used up and no longer profitable to the farm. This morning, the men loaded me onto a truck with dozens of other cows, and that brings me to now. We're bumping along the road, and I know where I'm headed. When the cows are taken away, they never come back. I've heard the men joking about how we'll be sent to slaughter and our bodies will be butchered for meat, most likely for hamburgers. I just want to leave you with one plea. Please, leave our milk for our babies, and stop supporting industries that exploit us from profit. 
If sharing my story can spare even one cow from this life of misery, maybe this won't have all been for nothing. Be a part of creating a kinder world 